Okay, so before we uh, start this series, uh, the plastic of this four-wheeler, uh, this KTM, or blah, 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 of this uh, Polaris Outlaw 525, um, the plastic was really bad on it, and it was about $700 to replace it, so I actually used some plastic paint called Krylon Fusion that I've had good luck for on ATVs for off-road. Uh, the paint probably won't last very long, but I decided instead of spending $700 that I would just paint the plastic and then um, apply the AMR Racing graphics to kind of cover some of the scratches and everything up. So what we're going to do here today is I'm not a professional um, and I'm not actually going to use the water and squeegee process. I'm just going to stick these uh, stickers on here because I'm kind of in a rush. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and apply these stickers, which are very high quality. If you're looking for a sticker kit, these AMR graphics are excellent. I used them years ago. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to apply this whole kit to this plastic. Okay, so this is my first attempt at the, uh, recording the audio for the video. So what I've done is I've already got these fairings kind of laid out on my motorcycle lift. Yeah, just make sure I look good on the camera. And we're going to basically apply this first part on here, um, which is on the nose cone. And I wasn't real sure that I liked this camouflage color, but the price of, of this uh, sticker kit was right. It was only $60 for the whole sticker kit and it's the AMR kit which I've used uh, AMR products before I actually went ahead and bought a AMR uh, coil for this ATV as well um, the ATV is up and running so stay tuned for the series here and there, there is a video on replacing the coil but what I'm doing here is I'm gonna apply this front fairing piece first see the v-notch on it those are real important to pay attention to when you're applying these um, I, I am gonna apply these uh, stickers dry and they are not going to be wet but um, it's real important to try to line them up and if you haven't done this before then I'm going to very highly recommend using a squeegee and a uh, spray bottle with solution in it probably just soap um, to apply these kits I, I, I've applied so many of these kits before and all these stickers that I'm pretty confident in laying these stickers on dry you are going to run into some air bubbles um, so you know, with putting them on dry, I'm, I know it's not going to be perfect, but I didn't have the time to make it perfect. And to be honest with you, it's going to be down in the woods in the mud and the gunk when I do ride. So I'm not super worried about air bubbles um, being in, in the sticker. So we're actually moving on over here to the uh, other side here. It's uh, same thing. We're just going to lay it down. It appears that I laid it down from the front to the back. And then we're just going to work the sticker from the front to the back applying pressure and I actually went to the center of the fender there and worked my way out to the outer side so it can cover the uh, the lip so the sticker will actually fold over there as you can see and you just want to as usual take your time and try to work as many as these air bubbles out um, the side of the sticker as possible if you've never done this before this can be quite difficult and we've, we're moving to the front here and you know that front top piece just presses in with tabs and then it clicks in and the one thing you'll notice is there is no headlight bulbs when I got this four-wheeler the the man that sold it to me said oh this thing's ready to go well I didn't realize that Polaris had the headlight bulbs patented so you cannot get any replacement headlight bulbs anywhere on the market for the, the this type of quad except for from Polaris and those headlight bulbs are about forty dollars a piece so I'm really going to have to go in and bite the bullet here and buy the headlight bulbs for uh, $40 a piece, which 80 bucks for headlights is nuts. I mean, that is just so much money um, for he for bulbs for your four-wheeler. And from now, from what I understand, what I've seen now, uh, the headlights, uh, they went to a standard type of bulb so you can replace them instead of them having their own. Um, as you can see, a little bit of the paint came off when I'm peeling this back. I really don't remember doing this. But I didn't get that sticker on straight and it peeled some of the paint off and it appears that I'm just kind of layering it on there and I'm working the air bubbles out I'm trying to get the center of the sticker stuck first and then you can go toward the edges here and I'm just kind of pushing any air bubbles over the edges don't stick the edges down all the way yet so you want to get that flat surface, try to get as much of it pushed out toward the edges. And then we're going to go back and do the edges. And 
there was a little excess here and I'm going to start clipping, cutting it off with the razor tool. You really need a good razor knife if you're going to be cutting this stuff. don't really recommend cutting towards you, but you know, you always want to cut away from you, but I didn't hurt myself here, so. There you go, and then we're going to just stick the edge down. Yeah, there I am cutting some of the air bubbles out there, pushing the air out of the cut, and trying to get the sticker flat. And just a little bit of pressure makes a, a ton of difference here. Okay, had to take a little break there. Um, didn't realize, talking five minutes straight into this microphone, how tiring this was going to be. But as you can, can uh, continue to see, I'm actually cutting the air bubbles out. I, I really don't care about these little slits on here. I'm going to cover this thing and so many other stickers that really the, the, the sticker kit basically was to cover the faded plastic. Um, when I spray painted the plastic, I used that Krylon Fusion plastic paint, which I've had good luck for luck with in the in the past but i will say if you if you do paint your fairings paint it the same color that they are and then uh uh pray to god that it doesn't flake off so there's something in that that fusion paint that allows the paint to actually flex you know because you are dealing with atv uh atv plastic so the paint needs to have the flex stuff in it just like the stuff that they use when they paint your car bumper that's plastic because it, it, the plastic will flex but we're just smushing some more air bubbles out. Um, it's real important to have, like I said, a sharp razor blade tool when you're doing this to cut off any excess uh, sticker that you have. And I'm just smoothing this out because this flash surface, I mean, I got a lot, a lot, a lot of air bubbles in this. Then we're going to go over to the other side here. And it appears I laid it out. Yeah, you kind of want to lay it out. Now, these these front fins here on the uh, that you see here that I'm getting ready to apply this sticker for, I'm not so sure with this larger radiator that I have that I'm not going to end up cutting these off when I reinstall the kit. Um, at the end of the video, you're going to notice that I put the kit back on the ATV where the ATV was stored. Um, however, uh, the larger radiator had not been put in yet. So I actually put an oversized aluminum radiator in there that holds about... I don't know, half a quart more fluid. And then I actually put the Wrath Racing air scoops on there. That's one of the first recommended things that they recommend on these quads are those air scoops um, because they can cut your temperature down like 10 to 12 degrees, they told me. So, and they're reasonably priced. They're about $55. So, but I think with those air scoops on there, I think you have to cut these, these pieces off. But, okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just applying this other side here. I've already kind of laid it out so I know where it's going to go because there's a little bit of space and i'm going to try to put the flat part on first i think and then work toward the back of it because you want to try to get the flat part on there first before you go over all the edges and actually it looks like i screwed it up a little bit and these if you have water on it you can move these around and since i'm doing it dry i'm really surprised i was able to pull that up so i'm just kind of working from the back toward the front here and you're starting to see you can actually see some little creases see that how it bubbled up right there I'm actually able to work that bubble out because the whole sticker isn't stuck and I'm able to push any of the excess air out the top and the bottom of the sticker because I didn't do the edges yet so you always want to lay the flat per the flat piece first and then once you have edges you can go back and push any excess air out of the flat piece to the edges and another tip is if you have a heat gun um, you can actually stretch these out a little bit as they're being applied. You don't want to overheat them, but a little bit of heat on these stickers will allow a little bit of stretch. They're not they're not vinyl. This is actually a sticker. Um, vinyl in the stickers is, is different applying um, to anything that you apply it to. So, and I'm just smoothing the edges out here. I should come back with a razor blade. And there there was a little excess, but I believe it was made with a little bit of excess because it covered exactly where it was supposed to. Yeah, there, here we go. And then, then you're just going to cut your little bit of excess off. And to apply these pla the, these sticker kits perfect, you've really got to be a professional and do this stuff all the time. Um, if, if you've never really applied stickers before, th this can be a very difficult task. And we're just going to cut that off. And then go back and probably smooth it out. 
And you want to make sure that you cut that off and don't leave that little bit in there. Because if that little bit overhangs, what will happen is you'll get moisture and stuff in there. And then it will start to peel the whole sticker. So moving on here, we're moving on to the gas tank piece of plastic. And this one's real simple. I think we're going to work our way from the bottom and fold it over to the top. Because it's got a little bit of a lip on the top of it. Yeah, that's what I did. So we'll get the bottom and it's fairly flat. This is what you got to watch for. See how it kind of creases there? You don't want to stick the whole sticker flat and then try to work the air bubbles out. You want to work the air bubbles from the other stuck part toward the top. See that? How the top isn't stuck down yet? So we're working the air bubbles toward the top to make it flat. And then pushing it all out. And actually a little bit of heat would have helped with this. Not, a, not an astronomical amount, but you can see that laid on there flat after we did that so you really kind of got to think how you're putting these stickers on as well so here we go with the other side same thing we're going to stick from the bottom and go to the top and put them on there and I'm having some issues with this microphone I didn't think setting this microphone up my my editing software isn't real good for this microphone so I had to go into my Windows 10 settings and adjust this microphone quite a bit um, and it keeps wanting me to do voice control for Windows. I didn't even know Windows did that. But every once in a while, I'll hit that button with that Cortana come up and, you know, try to artificially intelligent and speech recognition, all that garbage. But we're just smoothing the sticker flat and pushing the air bubbles out toward the top. Yeah, I had to peel it back just a little bit. And here's my list, because they gave me a little list. We're doing this one at a time. B big fan of only doing one project at a time, one piece at a time. Once you get into about five or ten different things, you've got five or ten different things going on on one thing, and you don't finish one thing, then all of a sudden th three things pile up, and then that don't nothing get done. That's the way my dad used to always do stuff. I'm kind of measuring up where this other sticker is going to go with this piece of plastic and line it up. Now this one here, this, this this front fairing was actually cracked a little bit on the top, and I think I'm going to come back and use a, use a knife, and I think I zip-tied the, the crack, which really to me is no big deal. But this piece was fairly flat and easy to lay as well. But don't forget that you've got to come back and um, cut the, the fairing mount, mount holes out so you can get your screws back in there to put this back on the ATV but we just lay it from the bottom and, and then we're gonna just going to do the same thing and work this out up toward the top get all the air out of it you really need to apply a lot of pressure so and if there's any excess I'll cut the excess off but I might have even used a uh, nope I used the razor knife and I cut where I thought the hole was you should be able to see where the hole should be for the screw and then cut it out I thought I used a uh, a poker. Yep, there we go. There's my poker to kind of poke the hole. Yeah, I'm a little upset about how much these light bulbs cost for the front end of this. Really not happy with that. If they would have made a front fairing set that would have got rid of the headlight and everything, I probably would have went, went with that. Because I've had two or three people look at this ATV and they're like, oh, it's a Predator. Well, no, not technically. It's not a Predator. It's got Predator plastic, but it's an outlaw. The The main thing that made me buy this ATV was that KTM engine in this in this Polaris. Now, I do, I do know that the Polaris 500, I think they're called Fuji motors. Those, Fu, those Fuji motors are, they are known to be bulletproof engines. They can really take a lot of abuse. But I think what happened in 2007, because this is a 2007 model, was... Honda and Kawasaki were releasing um, independent rear suspension sport quads, and KTM or uh, Polaris really didn't have anything on the market that could compete with them, because because what Honda did was at because you're running an independent rear suspension, um, you're adding more weight, more moving parts, and uh, two more shocks. You're adding more weight to the rear end, so Honda went with the 700 fuel injected. Um, and Kawasaki went to the KFX 700, which actually I was looking at some KFX 700s because I liked how they were the V-twin engine, which I'm familiar with because of the Articat four-wheelers that I had that ran that V-twin engine. 
Um, it's actually a CVT type transmission, and and when you're riding woods, I actually prefer a CVT transmission over a manual. There's a lot of people. Oh no, I, you don't want an automatic. You want to be able to shift gears. Well, no, not really. When you're in the woods, you you just want to hit the automatic and just go. Um, and those CVT transmissions, the way that they're built and made, I mean, it's just so much easier in the woods to just hit the hit the throttle and go, and not have to worry about the gears. But once I realized I wanted a sport quad. Um, and I, I, I knew about the Outlaw KTM engine. I said, I just have to have one. Because if I was going to buy a Sport Quad, a 450, um, I'd end up doing a lot of engine modifications. And hell, I might as well just buy a bigger ATV if that was the point of it. So I went ahead and went with this engine because they're known to be dependable too. But uh, what, what I'm doing here is this is the rear, the rear side. Under, this will be underneath of the seat. And th these here were actually kind of a pain in the butt to uh, to apply because there's a lot of angles here. So what I did was I went from the top and then the angle to the bottom kind of flared out. And you're, you're, you can see where I've creased it. And I got quite a few air bubbles in that. And then it just move along to the other side here. I mean, it's pretty simple stuff. But these kits, like I said, these kits are easy to install, especially if you got some junky looking plastic. Don't to me I'd rather buy a sticker kit and cover the thing in stickers than buy a uh buy a new set of plastics. Cause when these ATVs start getting some age on them, the value of them drops so much. Ugh. I mean this I think this was about a seventy five hundred, eight thousand dollar quad. It might even been more. It could have been in the nine thousand dollar range. I'm not a hundred percent sure but um they're 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 uh they're known to be real reliable for sport quad racing out in the woods so no intention on getting on the motocross track too old for that once you hit 30 i'll tell you you need to get off of two wheels and go to four just like uh travis pastrana says once you hit 30 the, the two wheel adventures are kind of over so But we're gonna go ahead and apply now. This was this was the worst here. This rear uh, this rear sticker probably should have used the squeegee and the solution bottle for this because it's such a large area. Now AMR, I will tell you this: th this sticker was cut exactly how it needed to be cut, uh, exactly where it needed to be cut. You could see the V where it was cut, where it needs to be folded over. But before you apply this, make sure that you test fit it so you know what you're doing when, when you go to apply this. And it appears that I did the outside first, working toward the inside, trying to push the excess air over the lip and smooth it out as I'm going here. Yeah, you can see how that crinkled there. That ended up not looking real well. I think I actually glued, got the old crazy glue out, and anything that was really sticking up, I glued it to the fairings. And then we're just going to flap this over here. And like I said before, this year, uh, this channel is kind of more of a tutorial type channel, and I've got some things worked up for 2020 that I'm wanting to do. Um, there's a thing called tool tuesday which uh michael bell is going to be reviewing tools that i get coming in and what i think of them and you know if these some of these cheaper tools that i buy are worth uh worth buying or if you want to stick with a name brand tool a lot of tool review channels out there hey i'm just giving you my my opinion on it if you want a real professional uh review of some tools yeah you can go check it out on another channel but i'm just trying to add some more content to my uh, youtube channel and then i will also be doing reviews on vacuum cleaners uh, i'm going to try to stick to the high dollar uh vacuum cleaners the battery powered ones one of my most popular videos on youtube is me uh god I, it just drives me nuts that i have to even mention this it's me taking apart a dyson v6 vacuum cleaner i've got over a hundred thousand views on that thing and uh it's just crazy that i can rip apart motorcycles and four wheelers but my most popular video is me taking a part of a, a Dyson vacuum. So you kind of have to feed YouTube what they want every once in a while. And what they want from me is apparently vacuum videos. So I went ahead and got a couple shark vacuums that I've got at the house that I'm going to be doing reviews on because those are my favorite to begin with. And if you have been watching my channel, uh, you've noticed that I am now running ads 
which is going to help me generate a little bit of money uh, from monetizing. I didn't want to, but I kind of had to, um, to bring in the more money for some of this other stuff. But I'm really hoping if you watch the Tool Tuesday or the vacuum videos that I get a, couple, a little bit more comments and interaction from people that watch it where all these ATV and motorcycle videos are more of a tutorial based it's not it's not real interactive for that so what I've done here is we're going to the last side I believe this is the last side and we're gonna protect from laying that down and I'm actually gonna start on this back side here and lay it down first because I noticed that it was easier to put down it's got less of a curve and then we'll I'll go from the back to the front but yeah, and then uh, one thing is I'd like to just thank all my AMS oil customers. Uh, those purchases that basically have got me really started real well on this YouTube stuff. And anybody that buys AMS oil, you're more, you're more than welcome to uh, shoot me an email, and I'll help you however I can. The one thing, once you become one of my AMS oil customers, I'll be available to you 24 hours a day to help you with anything that you're working on. All you got to do is go to my About page on YouTube, and I've got my email address there, and just feel free to shoot me an email any time of the day and I'll get back to you as soon as I read it so I've got over uh, over 20 years of experience working on this stuff and dad had me in a race car since I was five so and we're just kinda of pushing the air bubbles out toward the end here and this side went down a lot better than that first side I remember because it was a real pain in the butt and I think when I lifted that up right there that I actually pulled some of the paint off and I had to go back and crazy glue it. But this sticker kit's real good sticker kit and uh, I highly recommend somebody buying it. Oh, one other thing is I've actually become an Am Amazon uh, affiliate. So you may see some links below that you can really support my channel if you buy from those links below. But here we are in the garage where I kept it and uh, we're just kind of walking around here and... You know, I put some extra stickers on there. But this thing, this is just the first walkthrough on it. We, we haven't even started working on this thing because this thing don't even run yet. So thanks for watching and stay in tune. If, you, if you're a subscriber, hit thumbs up. If not, hit thumbs down. If you don't like this video, more to come. I will be working on this for quite a while now. So peace out.